Hey, what's going on, everybody? How we doing? Welcome to another edition of Write More Light Live. I'm your host, Ryan Collins. I'm the executive director of the Midwest Writing Center. Very good to be with you today on what so far has been a pretty pretty nice uh, Thursday afternoon. So I hope this finds you well. I hope this finds you safe. Um, I'm back in the uh, Midwest Writing Center offices today, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's always nice to be back here uh, in our offices in the Rock Island Public Library. Um, yeah, so um, today I wanted to uh, pick up where we left off a little bit on Tuesday. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about some things we got coming up at the Writing Center. Um, a couple program uh, notes, and uh, I was going to share a poem from actually one of our publications. Um, so... Yeah, uh, I wanted to do that, and uh, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about epistolary writing, uh, or, or letters, um, poems as letters, letters as stories, letters that become poems or stories, that kind of thing. There's a long, uh, rich tradition of that kind of writing, um, and uh, it's something that I've done a little bit myself, and for a change of pace, I'm going to share uh, a couple examples of my own uh, that are floating around out in the world. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a little different. Um, and I, then I wanted to get to uh, this uh, terrific prompt that's behind me that uh, came to me by way of a, a good friend, Matthew Gwinnett. He's a really fantastic poet that you should check out. And I believe this prompt came to him uh, through another fantastic poet uh, by the name of Tracy Brimhall, uh, who I think just had a book come out on Copper Canyon Press, actually. So you should definitely run and, and, and check that out. She's amazing. Um, so, and that's kind of, in my experience, how a lot of prompts work sometimes. One person comes up with a prompt and they share it and somebody else takes it and modifies it a little bit. Um, it's kind of, uh, it's a nice little chain of giving, uh, that I've seen, uh, with a lot of writers and poets, uh, since I've been doing this writing and poetry thing for a while. So, uh, it's cool. It's cool to share like that. Uh, I'm going to share my little, uh, version of it. Uh, I've done this workshop with elementary school kids. I've done this workshop with um, seniors. I've done this work with just about everybody in between. So uh, we'll do it together today. Um, I'm going to write one with you. Uh, it's quick. It's easy. Hopefully it's something you can take with you. And hopefully maybe uh, the finished product you get will be sufficiently um, strange and uh, worthwhile enough uh, for you to maybe send out because it's a postcard keeping with our letter writing theme. So with that, why don't we dive in? Uh, for the day, and I'll get into uh, some news and notes about the Writing Center because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I mean, we just sent a newsletter out with a bunch of updates. So if you are a newsletter subscriber, um, you probably got that right about the same time that this was starting. So uh, there's a little serendipity there. And uh, and actually, for those of you uh, tuning in in the Quad Cities, we're going to be on Living Local on WHBF today. Uh, a little bit talking about um, some things that we have upcoming talking about on this little ditty right here. So um, with that, why don't we get into our free writing a little bit, try to reset ourselves to do a little bit of uh, reset ourselves for language and writing. So get my timer here, five minutes as the usual. Um, dealer's choice today or writer's choice, I guess, whatever you're feeling. So. This is the freest kind of free write that ever did free write. So uh, I'm going to hit my timer, and I'm going to get my notepad, and then we're going to do a little writing together. Um, and then a little bit later, we'll do a little more writing together, hopefully. So here we go.
Five minutes. Right as I was typing my last word. Getting this timing stuff dialed in pretty well. So, yeah. So, um, hopefully you got something uh, useful out of that or something um, that might be useful uh, at some point. Um, so, yeah, just a couple quick things about what we got going on at the Writing Center uh, coming up. Uh, you're going to probably be hearing a lot more about uh, this or summer plans and things like that. Uh, every summer we have two major programs, uh, the David R. R. Collins Writers Conference, which has been uh, ongoing in its current form for 15 years, and uh, before that was the Mississippi Valley Writers Con Conference, uh, which David R. Collins, who was our co-founder, um, started about 40 years ago. Um, so very long-running program. Uh, we get really fantastic faculty member uh, members. Um, uh, this year, uh, it seems increasingly likely that we're going to have to move to a virtual format. So we're probably going to move the conference uh, online, um, either doing something kind of like this, or we might be using some uh, proprietary uh, writing uh, workshop platforms. Um, we're still kind of figuring that out. But everything is going to be at the same time, the same days. We're still going to do public events. We're just going to do them uh, virtually. So um, if you've attended the conference before and you were wondering if it's going on, it's definitely going on one way or another. Um, we're really excited about it. Uh, we know it'll be kind of a difficult transition, um, but we're going to be around to help um, participants, and faculty, and you know, anyone who might be interested. If you need to get acclimated with some of this stuff, we're happy to, to help you out. Just contact us. Uh, we want everybody to get uh, up to speed and comfortable uh, before the conference starts on June 25th. Um, so you're not trying to figure these things out while you're also trying to be in a writing workshop because uh, that's not cool. So um, we're excited about that. Our keynote this year is going to be uh, the amazing Liz Lenz. Uh, Liz has taught at our conference the last two summers, uh, and people love her um, justifiably. She's super fantastic. Um, she's going to be doing a keynote talk on June 25th in the evening that will be streamed uh, to the public. Um, and then she'll be teaching a master class on Friday afternoon, June 26th. Um, our other faculty members are Kali Bambali White, uh, or Kali White Bambali, excuse me, uh, who will be teaching a novel workshop and also collaborating with another one of our instructors, Misty Urban, um, on a sort of uh, publishing and, and, and proofreading workshop. Um, getting your manuscript ready to go, setting it up, querying agents, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, Misty will also be teaching a short story workshop. Uh, Misty's a really fantastic writer who uh, lives in Muscatine and runs the group uh, Writers on the Avenue. So if you're looking for a writer's group uh, in that area, uh, definitely check them out. Um, and then we have the amazing Rebecca Wee uh, from Augustana College who will be teaching the poetry workshop. And uh, Felicia Schneiderhan um, who will be teaching a memoir and nonfiction who's also taught at the conference before. Um, it's our 15th anniversary, so we're bringing back a lot of friends uh, who have taught in past years. Um, so it's going to be really terrific. Um, even if we can't be together in person, we'll still be uh, together and writing, and it'll be great. Um, so check that out, all the registration, all the, the schedule information, course descriptions, all of that is up online. Um, and like I said, we just sent out a, a newsletter. If you'd like to get our newsletter, go to our website, sign up. Uh, and we'll also send you a copy of our creative writing primer, a little like 15, 20 page uh, kind of getting started uh, booklet. Um, we'll send that to you for free, a little digital ebook. So um, the other thing we're doing this summer is Young Emerging Writers Summer Internship Program, which we also, this will be our 15th summer, so big anniversaries this year. Um, we're moving ahead with that in the same fashion. Uh, we'll be holding classes online. I'm sure a lot of students are probably tired of the distance learning model. Um, but we would much rather offer this opportunity uh, to students uh, rather than uh, just cancel it because so many things are getting canceled and if we don't have to, uh, we would rather not. So um, we're taking applications. We extended the deadline. We'll be taking applications through May 20th. Uh, the program is open to any students ages 15 to 19 who live in the greater Quad Cities area. Um, since we'll be meeting online, if distance is a problem, we're driving into the Downtown Rock Island is a problem. You're probably not going to have to worry about that. Um, but it's a really fantastic program. We meet for seven weeks. Uh, usually we've hired 15, 16 interns this year, depending on how many applications we get, considering the format, 
Um, we might hire more. Um, all the interns are paid a small cash stipend. All the interns get to attend the David R. Collins Writers Conference for free. Um, we usually have uh, free books, free magazines, uh, different writing resources that we try to make available to the kids. Um, uh, they do a lot of reading, so they get a lot of reading brackets. They kind of leave with their own little sort of anthology um, every summer. Uh, and they also produce a literary magazine called The Atlas. And this will be the 15th anniversary of The Atlas. Um, we'll still be publishing that. We'll still be putting them out. We'll still be sending out the community. Um, if you're interested in getting a copy of the Atlas, uh, normally right about this time of year, we're sending copies around to every school in six counties and libraries and youth service organizations and all kinds of people. Um, it's harder to do that right now, particularly because schools are closed. Um, so if you're interested in checking out a copy of the Atlas, we would be happy to send you one. You can buy a copy uh, on our website, on our MWC Press bookstore. Um, you can see all of our publications that are available there and all our back copies of the Atlas. Um, I figured just to give you a little taste, because I think sometimes when people hear uh, young writers, they think uh, they have ideas of maybe what that means. And I think a lot of times those ideas are um, very limited and, and kind of unfounded, um, that they're just going to be sort of angsty, kind of teenage poems, if you will, uh, and stories. Uh, and that's not the case. And even if it was, I read plenty of angsty adult literature too, so um, I think everybody's got uh, some of that, that angsty goodness. Um, but uh, it has been a real privilege to work with these students. They're some of the best and brightest and most creative students, I think, uh, that we have in our area. Um, they also tend to just be the most fantastic young people that you'd ever hope to meet. Um, so if you know any 15 or 19 year old students who are looking for some intern experience, looking for um, some job experience, even though we might be doing it remotely, it is still a job. We expect people to, to show up on time and do all those kinds of things. Um, there's a, they have to fill out an application. There's a phone interview that they have to do. Um, so it's very much a job skills program while also being a creative writing program. So if you know anybody who might be interested, please send them our way. Um, we'd love to be overwhelmed with applications. Uh, we know there's a lot of fantastic young writers out in the community, and we would love to uh, work with as many of them as possible. So with that, uh, I wanted to share a poem uh, from a past issue. I want to make sure I get this right. Um, this is a poem by... Um, uh, YEW alumna, uh, alumna uh, Aaron Hantz, uh, who was in the program for a couple years, uh, who's a really fantastic poet. Um, I'm going to read a poem of hers, so if she's out there, uh, I will do my best. Aaron, uh, I hope you don't mind. Um, this one's kind of a prose poem. Uh, it's actually not from last year's issue. It's from volume 13, which looks like this. Uh, and the poem is called My Hometown Sings. I don't have a digital copy of it I can throw up. I apologize. But uh, interesting note about uh, this poem. Uh, this poem was selected uh, to be part of the Quad City Symphony Orchestra's uh, uh, commission, uh, City Speaks, which was composed by James Stevenson. Um, uh, the, the late, great Dick Stahl also contributed a poem and another poet from YEW uh, two years ago. Um, Adrian Cole also uh, had a poem selected. Um, so uh, James McPherson took um, these poems, took visual art from the area, uh, took a bunch of different creative texts from uh, writers and artists and performers in the Quad Cities and used all of that as inspiration uh, to, to write this, this, this beautiful uh, piece, City Speaks. Um, uh, the poems were included in the composition, so you can hear the whole poems. Uh, I believe the Quad City Symphony Orchestra, um, this performance is up online. You can find it online. The program is also up online. Um, so we'll post those links uh, after the fact. I'm flying solo of the day, and I only have two hands. Um, so we'll get that stuff up there. You should definitely check it out. We were um, very grateful that the uh, Quad City Symphony Orchestra um, saw um, the talent um, and the value um, in the writing of some of the young people that we get to work with. So it was very cool that this was uh, included. Uh, so I'm going to try to do justice to Aaron's terrific poem, My Hometown Sings. Rock Island sings with her jaw broken and hung loose. She sings like others can't hear her. No, she sings because the others can hear her. She knows she sounds like a throat full of potholes. She knows the swing of her strings can only be chopped up 
to overture. She cannot forget the way everyone ends up leaving her, but she sings in soft sweeps across empty streets and in tunneled echoes. She sings just like she taught Jake and Elwood. She sings in her dust-rated tongue. She sings like syrupy saxophone welling up in every hollow building. She sings about her arsenal of forgiveness. She does not know how to manufacture such dangerous weapons anymore. She sings like lungs filled with rain that refuse to drown. She sings against melodramatics and sensational static. She sings, she sings, she sings. It is your own fault if you can't hear her. Hmm. Goosebumps. Um, wow. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and thanks to all the YW alumni out there. We've worked with, uh, I don't know, well over 120 students over the 15 years. Um, and I hope you're all doing well. Um, so check them out. Check out back copies of the Atlas. And if you know some young writers out there, uh, please encourage them to apply for the program. Um, I think they'll find that it's a, a pretty rewarding experience. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. I'm going to see if we can maybe uh, get some of them to join me on air. Um, so what I wanted to talk about uh, today a little bit uh, is an introductory, or is an intro introduction to epistolary writing or the epistolary poem. Um, basically, it's just a, a poems in the form of letters um, or letters in the form of poems, however you want to think about it. It can kind of go... Uh, both ways and uh, throughout history, there's a lot of examples of um, this kind of writing. Uh, I mean, you can find epistolary writing in the Bible. Um, it goes back to Horace and Ovid. Um, but also, uh, I think if you go through the history of letters, um, you, know, you, can, you can see uh, in correspondence between writers, you can see where poems and stories and content that ends up um, and books um, and ends up in a different form. Uh, often, sometimes uh, those those seeds uh, start to germinate in letters and in correspondence. And I think uh, correspondence is just a really uh, terrific thing. Um, I don't know um, how many of you out there might be sending letters to people that you love, um, but for me, there's nothing sweeter uh, than to get in the mail than uh, a letter or a postcard. Um, yeah, something usually uh, handwritten um, from someone that you know, someone that you love, someone you haven't maybe seen in a while. Uh, I'm really lucky to have a couple friends that occasionally send me uh, postcards um, when they're traveling and things like that, but just because you don't necessarily need um, a reason to reach out and, and start some correspondence with somebody um, other than uh, you want to talk with them. Um, maybe you don't even know them. You can still try to reach out to them and talk to them and um, correspond with them. Uh, another rich tradition, I think, in um, among writers uh, are, uh, are younger writers reaching out to um, uh, older, more established writers, writers that they admire, writers that they look up to. Um, I actually just saw uh, on, on Facebook uh, earlier this week um, a writer calling for, um, I can't remember the title that they had for it, but um, encouraging uh, writers to reach out to writers that they admire as a follow-up to National Poetry Month. April is National Poetry Month, uh, and they were suggesting that May be the month that young poets reach out um, and send letters and try to start some dialogue or correspondence with writers that they love. Um, and I think it's a really terrific idea. Um, it takes maybe a little courage, um, and it might not always be received. Um, you can't do anything about that. You can't control that, just like uh, you can't always control how anything that you write is received or if it gets published or not or anything like that. So it's about the same kind of chance. Um, and if you do get some uh, response, um, it can be really rewarding. It can maybe uh, be something that uh, blooms into a friendship. So um, I highly encourage that. But I also think it's just a really um, terrific way to sort of conflate uh, practical writing, uh, the kind of writing that we do most every day, and you know, thinking about emails for work and things like that. Um, you know, not all of your emails have to be boring, right? You can send emails to people that you love, your friends, things like that. Um, uh, and you can write about more interesting things than whatever you might be doing uh, uh, for work or, um, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever other uh, mundane stuff like that that maybe usually fills your uh, inbox. Um, so, um, yeah, let's, uh, there's, 
I kind of wanted to use, there's a really terrific essay uh, by a poet named uh, Hannah Brooks Model um, called Learning the Epistolary Poem. You can find it up at the uh, Poetry Foundation website. Um, she's a really fantastic poet. And, and this, uh, this essay in particular, we'll, we'll, we'll throw this up in a bit, um, but this essay is really great because not only does it sort of give you a history and a background um, of the epistolary poem going all, all the way back to, uh, to Greece and to Rome, you know, Horus and Ovid, but kind of tracing it all the way through up to our, our present moment because it's a very popular form now. Um, it's one that I've uh, worked in um, and then I've found uh, quite rewarding. Um, the other thing about Hannah's essay that's really terrific is there are prompts. The, the essay is divided into sections and at the end of each section there's a prompt. Um, so rather uh, than, um, I, I'm just going to send you there for those prompts because I've got another prompt that we're going to do here today. Um, all of the prompts, all of the letter writing, but definitely check that out. Like I said, we'll post that um, and, and get that up um, so you can check it out. Um, but I think one of the things that's kind of interesting about this epistolary writing is um, it gives us an opportunity to maybe take conversations that are uh, private um, and, and, and put them uh, in between other readers uh, than those uh, than the addressee. Right? Um, and I think uh, that kind of intimacy uh, that letters, I think, inherently have just as a form um, I'm writing to someone else. They are writing to me. Um, you know, that's a private correspondence. To open that up um, is to open up some level of intimacy. And I think um, intimacy can be scary, but it's also kind of a superpower, uh, particularly when it comes to like creative work, right? So um, if you're willing to sort of uh, pull back the envelope, as it were, a little bit, and let people into that. Um, it can be uh, it can be really powerful. I think the other thing is um, sometimes um, when we're writing that kind of private correspondence, um, I think maybe we write a little bit differently um, or maybe a little less self-consciously. Um, and I think any kind of writing activity you can do to help you write a little less uh, self-consciously um, is probably worth a try. Um, I think sometimes we are our own worst critic and we can often be our own worst editor. Uh, and we can kind of shut things down, uh, maybe before we really give them a chance and see where they might be going. Um, and so I think sometimes when we're writing a letter, we're more focused on just uh, saying what we want to say uh, to the person that we're writing to, uh, more than uh, being worried about what other people are going to say or how readers are going to interpret it or anything like that. Um, and I think uh, that's a pretty healthy mindset to do any kind of writing. Um, and I think uh, because we're a little self-conscious, I think the opportunity to surprise yourself in what you're writing uh, is maybe a little bit higher than it would be otherwise. Um, and again, I think uh, surprise is always, um, it's definitely something that I look for in uh, a lot of other writers. I know uh, it's kind of a hallmark for uh, knowing when they're on the right track and feeling like they're working on something that's uh, um, getting them inspired and, and feels like it has momentum. Um, you know, one of my, uh, you know, Richard Hugo uh, is a really uh, famous American poet uh, and writer. Um, I've mentioned his book, The Triggering Town, which is a really fantastic book on writing. Um, but he also has a book of uh, 13 Letters and 31 Dreams. I think that might be right. I can't. I might be getting the title wrong. Um, but the letters uh, that are, um, they have line breaks. They're in jam. They look like you would expect uh, uh, poems to look on the page. Uh, but they read very much like letters, and a lot of them are written to other well-known writers and poets, American writers and poets. Um, and um, so that's a real, if you're looking for an example of something that reads kind of like a straight-up correspondence, but then um, that's been given the form and shape of a poem, um, I think Richard Hugo is a, is a terrific example. And if you want to see an example of sort of um, someone who's taking their correspondence and sort of mining that, um, for um, their creative work, or maybe um, realizing something they wrote in a letter might be something that might be useful or applicable um, to their creative work. Um, Hannah Brooks Model in uh, her uh, in her essay talks about Lorraine Niedeker. Let's see if I can find that part here. Um, 
Yeah, uh, Lorraine Niedeker, uh, she's got this example um, of the great American poet Lorraine Niedeker um, in a, writing a letter to Louis Zukofsky, um, and it's got a, a chunk of the letter in there. And then you can, um, uh, she pulls up a poem called I Rose from Marsh Mud. Um, and you can see, it's really fascinating that you can see this letter that she wrote to her friend uh, and the way that ends up transposing um, into this really wonderful poem. Um, so I think it's a beautiful example of how all the writing that we do in one way or another can, can uh, inform, uh, one kind of writing can inform another. Um, thinking about writing in one way can be useful maybe in another context. Um, I think uh, the less orthodox I have been about those things, the more uh, rich and rewarding writing has become for me. Um, so this is a really easy thing. We've probably all written letters at some point, maybe at a pen pal when you were in school. Um, I know I had a pen pal. I don't remember uh, where they were. Um, I'm sure what I wrote to them when I was in elementary school was not um, the juiciest of material, um, but, uh, but it was cool. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't do as much hard copy uh, letter writing and sending as I used to, but it's something that I'm kind of gearing up to do for a project. Um, and you can just make somebody stay with it. Um, even if you send them something as like simple and weird um, as, a, as a surreal postcard, like the prompt we're going to do here in a little bit. Um, we'll get to that. Um, but I think, too, like uh, even though letter writing is a really familiar form, even though we can find um, all kinds of examples of it, not just in poetry, but in storytelling. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I teach composition uh, at St. Ambrose University, and I think probably one of the most used texts in those kind of classes in this country is Letter from a Birmingham Jail uh, by Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Um, very, very famous text. Um, you know, not a poem, not a story. Um, has a very clear purpose and argument, um, but still has a poetry to it. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, creative writing can have all of that purpose too, right? Um, I think that's just as much a creative writing text as it is a rhetorical text. Um, and I don't think we should think of those things as being mutually exclusive. Um, but we can also um, bring strangeness and uh, surreal, uh, surrealness to um, uh, the letter form. Um, and that's kind of something I've been more interested in. Um, I know like uh, Jack Spicer would be another example um, where he took some of his letters and sort of like um, arranged them to poems. Um, but I don't know, we, uh, a correspondence does not necessarily need to be something between a person and a person, right? Um, we can think more strangely and creatively about these things than that. Um, sometimes it might be to a person to a place. Uh, sometimes it might be from a living person to a dead person. Uh, sometimes it might be from person to animal or animal to person or animal to animal. Who's to say? Um, for the examples that I'm going to share with you here in a minute, um, uh, I started a project a long time ago when I was in graduate school. Uh, one of my uh, uh, cohort, uh, a guy named Ian Harris, uh, was from a place called Twin Falls, Idaho. Um, and I'm from the Quad Cities. Uh, I'm in Rock Island now, but I, I tell people I'm from the Quad Cities. So we were in these places um, that, uh, that, that, were, that are plural, right? The names are plural. Um, so he started referring to me as Quad Cities, and I started referring to him as Twin Falls. And we thought that was kind of clever, um, or at least kind of cute. I don't know about clever. Um, probably pretty nerdy, but that's us. Um, and uh, it kind of took off as it did uh, when I find little bits of language that I think are, like, fun or cute or... Um, uh, seem like they've got a spark or something. Um, I usually write into them and write into them a lot. So I started writing these uh, these kind of prose poems. Um, they look just like chunks of text on the page, but they are in jam. They do have line breaks. Um, so they look like prose poems, but I don't know if they're exactly prose poems. I'll leave that um, for uh, better, wiser poets to sort out. Um, but I started addressing them to places. Um, and the trick is most of them are written to actual people. Um, but I just kind of took that thing that Ian and I were doing where we were referring to ourselves uh, by the places where we were from, and I just applied that to all kinds of people that, all a bunch of my friends, family, people that I love, um, people I hadn't met, people I admired, um, 
I know Ed Roberson, the very, very great Ed Roberson, a uh, great American poet, um, just won the Jackson Poetry Award today. We um, was so thrilled to, uh, to see that. If you're not familiar with Ed, um, he's a total visionary and uh, I think one of the, the great American poets um, that we've been fortunate to have and you should run that walk and check out his work. Uh, but one of the letters that I wrote um, was, uh, um, or actually the only letter um, that I received that, that I respond to, usually I would send people letters and they might write something back or be like, this is weird, I don't know what's going on here, but thanks, I guess. Um, but Ed uh, slipped me uh, a, a Dear Twin Falls poem um, into my mailbox uh, when I was in graduate school. It was probably uh, the greatest gift that I got the whole time I was in graduate school. I couldn't believe uh, a writer of his stature would, would, would take enough interest in the things I was turning in to class to write one to me. Uh, and he was very mysterious about it too. He didn't uh, address it. I had to kind of figure it out because he wrote it from uh, I believe it was Jones and Laughlin Steel, Pittsburgh, uh, which is where he hails from. So, um, so that was it started a correspondence with me, um, and that was pretty cool. I think that's uh, you never know once you put your poems or you're writing out the world how they're going to bounce around and what they might uh, generate in response. Um, and I think doing something in a letter format um, makes that response even easier for people because everybody knows what a letter is. You know, a lot of people maybe don't want to write a poem, um, but writing a letter, writing a postcard, not a big deal. Um, it's just kind of shifting that context a little bit and thinking about um, who we're addressing and why. Um, I, did, I did the place thing because um, I'm really interested in how place uh, affects who we are, how we affect the places that we're at. Um, uh, I'm really impacted by place in my writing and my creative practice. So um, it kind of made sense to sort of push into that and see where that would go. So with that, I'm going to read a couple examples and then I want to get into this, uh, this prompt behind me. Um, so we'll put this link up. Um, this is from a magazine called The Two River View. Um, these poems are old, I will uh, readily admit. I want to say these came out uh, 10, 11 years ago, something like that. So um, they are not recent. Um, if you go to the, the, the magazine's page uh, with these poems, you can, uh, yeah, you, you, there's an audio link, so um, you can hear me read them from 10, 11 years ago when they came out. Um, I sound a little different. It's weird. Um, but so I figured I would read these because um, they published two of these poems. And um, uh, one is called Dear Davenport, one is called Dear Rock Island. Um, so I was, obviously I was pretty happy that they took these two poems uh, so I could represent both sides of the river and the Quad Cities uh, in one place, uh, particularly in a magazine called The Two River View. Um, it seemed all very serendipitous uh, and, and, and pretty cool. Um, so both of these, uh, Dear Davenport uh, was written to uh, a, a friend of mine I used to be in a band with um, who was kind of going through uh, a tough time and kind of having feelings about uh, this place and living here and you know, just things we go through in life, and maybe wondering if he's in the right place. Um, on Dear Rock Island, I kind of wrote to uh, several people. Um, uh, they're a little bit elegiac. They kind of have a little bit of elegy in them. Uh, there's a little bit of kind of like uh, bittersweetness. Um, they're sort of about uh, departure and um, uh, people moving away from each other. Um, that's all I'll say. I'm not going to talk about them too much. Um, but yeah, um, so I'll just read them. Um, they've changed over the years. As I'm looking at them now, I'm kind of realizing these are not what they look like uh, in the chat book that I that I published called Dear Twin Falls, and they're definitely not what they look like uh, now in the manuscript that they're in. So um, I'll just read them as they are here um, because that's how they published them. So thanks to Riverview. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, here we go. I'll just read them in order. So we'll start with Dear Davenport. Dear Davenport, it's a full lemon moon, and I'm stuck in your craw, an otter caught in your lock and dam. Lock jawed, bridging back and forth between your valley hands. Years later, and I still struggle to be ambidextrous. 
a good little drummer boy. My hands aren't as wide as yours, and aren't you a slippery one indeed? I've learned well the wherewithal. I know how your habits make the children heavy bored. I was one of them, but I'm all grows up and grows up. I know they'll learn to taste the air around them, learn their way between bridges and to firmly shake you with both hands. There, but for the grace of God. Quad six. And just a couple notes on that. Like, so um, if there are like familiar phrases in there, that was something um, that I did. I feel like a lot of times in letters, as in conversation, um, we include kind of inside jokes or, you know, little bits of language that mean more to the person that we're writing maybe than they would um, to a larger audience. Um, so there's like all throughout these poems that I wrote, there are all these kind of little references, just things I like. Uh, uh, the all grows up and grows up is a, is a riff on a line from the movie Swingers. It's pretty well known. Um, the phrase heavy board comes from a really um, well-known uh, dream song uh, by uh, John Berryman. Um, so I'm trying to play with those uh, influences and those sources a little bit. Um, but also, you know, um, if you're familiar with the Quad Cities, um, this is an area of bridges. We're right on the Mississippi River. Um, there's a new, uh, the new I-74 bridge uh, just had the first uh, arch, I think, completed yesterday, actually. So um, there's bridge building going on uh, as we speak. Um, and there are two bridges just um, to the north of me. So I try to include some of the actual texture of the landscape um, and you know the water, the river. Um, so even though I wrote this for a specific person, um, I tried to think of other things um, you know, beyond them or that relate to them or things that they would sort of get and appreciate. Um, and if not, everybody else gets it, that's okay, because uh, it's at once a letter that I wrote as a poem to publish out in the world, but is also uh, something, I guess, primarily I wrote uh, for my friend that I hoped uh, would bring them a little bit of comfort uh, when he was going through a difficult time. Um, and if uh, not all readers pick up on all that stuff, I don't know that it's all that different than how poems are all the time. So I'm not all that worried about it. And I would encourage you not to be as worried about it as well. Um, I would encourage you just to write uh, the best uh, poems or letters that you possibly can. Um, so I'm going to read the second one. And then we'll get into uh, some more writing. And hopefully, um, maybe you can do this poem. Maybe you can share it with us. Um, it tends to uh, yield fantastic results. So hopefully. Um, it will do that for you. Uh, but I'm reading this last one because, um, truthfully, it's one of my favorite poems I've ever written. Uh, and it's written about the place where I've lived for the last 10 years. Um, and we, we really like it here. So um, and this is where my, my, uh, my dad and my uncle grew up. So I got a lot of family connections to this place. I think it's a special place. So uh, this one's called Deer Rock Island. Deer Rock Island. Sadly unwinds the smoke from barbecue send-offs, ending in dis less than beginning. Friends, as you said, touch land and fly away. So we work, learn to second guess less than before. We accept consequences of living in the old fire hazards. Our blood's still clean and no nostalgia or legal speed takes us anywhere back. But somehow we share a language. We speak Esperanto and bear a cross. We learn to love the waterways, which bend us as much as they're bent. Some get remissions, others terminal. Others just born delivery boys and sacrifices. It's been too long since we've seen anything but double. Seen anyone anywhere but off. Still we make and manage contact. Don't fear the reaper. Quad cities. So yeah, a lot of the same stuff in terms of references. There's actually uh, my friend that I wrote Dear Davenport for. There is a lyric to a song that he wrote in Deer Rock Island. So um, that one's kind of for him also. So um, so those are just a couple examples. I'm not going to uh, dig any more into those. Um, if you want to, um, feel free to ask questions or anything. I'm always happy to talk about that stuff. But right now, let's do some writing. Um, cause that'll be fun. Um, so what I have behind me, uh, hopefully you can see it. Okay. Um, on my big, um, writing pad here. Um, 
the surreal postcard, which as I mentioned before is a, is a, is a quick prompt. Um, we've used this as an icebreaker for YAW. Um, I've done this with a lot of different writing groups of all shapes and sizes and uh, um, you know, all experience levels, things like that. Um, I, got, I was made aware of this prompt, uh, or it was shared uh, with me by a really great poet named Matthew Burnett, um, who I believe uh, got a version of it from Tracy Brimhall. Um, I don't know if there's an origin beyond that. There very well could be. Um, but thank you, everybody who's passed this along and shared this. Um, I've tried to share it with a lot of people, so hopefully this prompt has like generated a lot of like fun and interesting work over the years. Basically, it's real simple. This is all you need. You need something to write with, and then um, some kind of uh, note card. Okay, it's a postcard shape. It's not exactly a postcard. You could use a postcard if you wanted to, um, but I think you'll see once we get into it. Um, you might want to do the general, the uh, initial writing, the generating of the list. Um, you might want to do that on a separate piece of paper, and then uh, migrate your actual piece onto a postcard, or just do it like this. And then you can kind of revise maybe what you've got, put it on a postcard, and send it to somebody. Um, particularly somebody who might appreciate something strange, because these tend to be pretty strange, um, which is great. I think poetry um, holds uh, a lot of dominion over the strange, um, and strange makes often for good poetry. So um, let's get strange. Um, basically, it's very simple. So you take the blank side of the card first, okay, and then you generate a list. And this is kind of where. Um, usually this is a multi-person exercise, um, so I'm not going to be able to do all of the steps, um, but I can still do it and give you an idea. Um, let's put this back up here real quick first. Okay. Um, so on the blank side of the page, or on the blank side of the postcard, excuse me, you want to generate a list of words, um, you know, five to seven words. I went for six, and I've got prompts here for all of them. So... What I'm going to do, um, I haven't thought about this at all yet. I'm just going to put this together. Um, uh, I've got match and verb, a favorite animal or an animal of some kind, maybe not your favorite, who knows. Um, a concrete noun of whatever. Uh, another action verb because action verbs make for good writing uh, and also good reading. Uh, a favorite food or maybe what you had for lunch or breakfast or whatever, some kind of food item, doesn't matter. Um, and this last one, dealer's choice, writer's choice, whatever you want. So I'm going to fill this out real quick. Because uh, I'm going to try to do this prompt before we finish up today. Um, and we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, um, I'm going to use the infinitive forms of the verb. So I'm going to go with sing. Um, I'm going to go with badger for animal. Uh, a concrete noun. I'm going to go with. Why not go with bridge if you're just talking about bridges? My action verb, um, I'm going to use sail. Uh, favorite food, go curry. Shout out to Mantra in Davenport if you're looking for that really good chicken curry in the Quad Cities. Um, definitely check them out. Uh, Ryder's Choice, hmm, let's see. Um, uh, what's a fun word? Let's go with disco. So, my words are sing, badger, bridge, sail, curry, and disco. Okay, so you would have that list of words on this page. Now, ideally, you would have two, three, four more people um, that you would be doing this with. Once everybody has their list on the back, you would hand the sheet to the person sitting next to you. So the list of words that you have to work with are not the words that you yourself generated, which I think helps to with the surrealness of all of this, right? Um, you don't get to play favorites with the words you chose. You get to use the words that are given to you. Um, and those might be words you like or not. Then the next step, um, if we were doing this as a group, um, whoever was kind of moderating, um, would take a word from everybody in the group. So one, like whatever word that stands out most on the list that they received from one of their partners, um, they would pick a word, we would generate the list that way. Obviously I'm here by myself, so I can't do that. So I'm just gonna go with the list I have here. Um, and it'll still work, it'll still be great. I don't know where this is going. I don't think I've ever written a poem uh, or anything uh, with the words badger and disco in them. 
uh, at the same time. So huh. um, we'll see where this goes. Um, so then, once you have your list, um, you would flip it over to the line side. Sorry, i got to grab my pen real fast. And then the moderator would pick one of these words um, to be the, um, the addressee. Um, I'm just going to pick a seventh word just to be weird. So uh, I'm going to go with another food item that's diff. Uh, am I? Let's see. Um, no, I'm going to go with uh, the river. Why not? So, dear Mississippi River. Okay. So now I have my address C in my terrible handwriting. Um, so then the idea is that as fast as you are able to, you take the list of words that you have generated, however they've been generated, and you write a postcard to the addressee, in this case, Dear Mississippi River, um, using these words and any other words that you need. Uh, and the idea is A, to do it as quickly as possible, B, to only fill this space, and C, to not worry too much about trying to uh, make sense. Um, which is good when you get a random smattering of words um, that you don't necessarily um, know how they're going to fit together if they fit together at all. So um, I'm going to take this list of words. It looks like we got about nine minutes left. I'm going to see if I can generate something really quickly. Um, and if I can get it done in time, I will share it with you. Um, if you're doing this at home, please feel free to share these with us if you like. Um, Otherwise, uh, you can um, send them to somebody that uh, you, you send them to a friend, send them to a family member, um, surprise somebody. Uh, I'm sure whoever you send this to will not be expecting to get uh, something weird in the mail. And it's actually something that we've done with YW and the YW Middle School Camp, which we also do in the summer. Um, we've written these postcards and sent them to kind of random people uh, just as a way to kind of make them smile or shake their head or. Um, just to encounter a little bit of uh, a, a safe, fun weirdness um, that they wouldn't otherwise uh, have have received. Um, so it's cool when these find their way out in the world um, if you're willing and brave enough to let them out in the world. Um, so I'm going to do this now. So I'm going to fire up the shot clock. And yeah. Oh, and you can use uh, any uh, plurals are fine. Any um, form of the verbs is fine. Anything, you can modify the words however you want, or at least how, that's how we do it. We're not, uh, like I said, uh, we try not to be too orthodox here. So um, however the spirit moves you. Um, let's see what happens.
All right. So, I don't know where you're at, but we're running a little low on time. I thought I could get done before we ran out. And lo and behold, I did. Um, now I have a lot of practice. Again, I've done this a lot of times. Um, so if it takes a little bit longer, that's okay. Uh, but you don't want um, to, you don't necessarily want to drag this out um, forever. It's not that kind of exercise. It's uh, a little bit like the free ride. They're just kind of like uh, hit reset and kind of get you out of uh, however you were thinking five minutes before and hoping to think maybe a little bit differently uh, five minutes into the future. So um, just for, uh, you know, proof of concept, I will read what I have. Um, and yeah, that'll be that. Um, so this is Dear Mississippi River, written uh, in three or four minutes. Dear Mississippi River, it's been a badger of a year to date, and every day it's getting harder to sail on. Not to worry. And enough time, maybe more, I'll curry enough favor to get us out of here, to make a bridge between hope and dirt air and dreams until then we'll just keep singing our broken hearts out so our lives get back to being a little more disco your defender Hot cities so maybe made a little bit of sense uh i don't know hopefully sort of um and not all the words are maybe used as they were intended, but I use them as I intended, and that's kind of the most important thing. Um, and I got some unintended results, like that internal rhyme, a uh, little shout out to you know say on the line all Richie uh, action. Um, but uh, anyway, um, we're just about done for the day, so um, please check us out online. Visit us. Visit our website at uh, www.mwcqc.org as in Midwest Writing Center Quad Cities .org. Uh, Check out the writing conference. Uh, check out the Young Emerging, uh, Young Emerging Writers Summer Internship Program. Uh, check out our bookstore. Um, and yeah, have a terrific weekend. Take care, and we will see you back here um, next week on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.